And maybe I, I would like to ask you, Ismail, if you if you maybe could give some intuition uh, regarding the the um, geodesic, and for example, this thing with the image uh, interpolation or image morphing. Yeah. So or you can give the intuition at least. Yeah, exactly. So it can be it can be used for this interpolation between between measures for image morphing, but I think that you need to go to unbalance optimal transport and, and 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 here i think that we are going to lose against deep models because maybe you have okay i'm very bad at drawing but you have one face here that has some some features and and then you have another face here that has a smaller a smaller mouth maybe and bigger eyes and if you use just normal transport it will try to transport part of the of the of the smile of this guy to the eyes of the other guy so the interpolation so it gives really, really uncanny results if you do this. There's a generalization of, of, of this optimal transfer problem that, that uh, allows a bit of mass creation and mass generation. So maybe if the points are too far away, it just drops that mass and generates it in the other side. So for example, it works better in this case. For example, in, 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 this, in this example, we would just um, move this part of the mouth that has the same ma mass as this, uh, yeah, it will just transport this to this. It will drop this mass, and it will generate a bit of mass in the eyes, for example, something like like that. So this, that, yeah. Sorry, this is not this is not uh, like uh, incorporated into the domain the composition yet, right? The imbalance. No, no, there, there's not. So we really want to do that. So this unbalanced um, stuff. Needs to be done if, if, if you want to, to take a look at, at um, biological data, for example, because you are taking some measurements in this example, actually, that I have before. So here you are taking some measurements, and measurements are affected by noise. So these things won't, won't have the same mass. And though you could, in principle, um, normalize them to the same mass, it's actually very non-physical. Non, non non Actually, what you want to, to, to allow is to have, uh, for a bit of mass creation or annihilation to account for this noise and for the fact that maybe some molecule is behind each other, behind another, and you don't see it, and this, this kind of stuff. So we really need to do it in the, in the library because it's, um, because it's uh, an important part if we want to apply. We know that it can be done. So we have some prototypes and, and, and no know how to prove that, that it works, but we have still some technical issues that we have to solve. So the, the, the soup problems are no longer, so precisely because you are allowed to change your mass, all the cells have to synchronize how they change the mass because yeah, yeah to, to, not, to, not, um, to not be suboptimal about the, how much mass they, they choose to generate or to annihilate. And okay. so, um, yeah, so there are technical difficulties. We are working on it, and, and we want to, to have it soon, maybe. And j just just to, to, to finish about the about the, the these images, another problem is that, that you need to have them all uh, looking at you. If if you have like different gestures, you are done. Like, you you cannot interpolate between that. That you just yeah, you need deep models. I think yeah. Okay, so I don't know who raised the hand first, Justina or Arthur. I think not Justina. So maybe if you want to go ahead. Okay. Um, can you? So um, my um, actually my question um, follows up on Juan's question. Um, actually, I wanted to also ask if you can use this optimal transport for image morphing. Um, and now after your answer, I'm a bit confused. Um, um, I'm I'm a biochemist, so maybe I got I got lost on the way. But at the beginning, you were talking about this Kantorovich can problem, mm -hmm. um, where you transform one pile of sand into completely different pile of sand, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you said that you can so that this is also an optimal transport problem. Yes. Um, and to me, this looks like also transforming one object in one image to a different object in another image. Um, yes. Yeah. So uh, does it mean that the entropy regularized um, optimal transport that you then later talked about is not referring to the pile of sense or? 
Yes, uh, so there's, like, there's where a is the difference between the yeah. images so, and the kind of sand? If, if, no, no, there, there's no difference at all. So of course, uh, an image can be seen as a pile of sand. But if you want really to transform one image to another, they have to have the same the same mass, right? Yes, I understand what you mean. That the not same number of sand. Yeah, uh, exactly. Con, uh, basically. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so, and in an, but in an image, but I don't. And, ah, okay. But it, uh, in the case of the sand, we don't care um, if the sand corn ends up somewhere else on the other exactly. pile because we don't care about connections. Okay, do you have an idea how um, how you could combine your approach um, with image morphing? Like how you could penalize um, unphysical, unrealistic displacements um, of some parts of the mass? Like for example, what you could do here in this morphing of the two faces that you draw, um, instead of moving the mass to the eyes, just move all the mass to the other mouth. So the mouth just gets more mass on a, on a smaller area, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah. It, could be, it could be this um, that we were talking about of this unbalanced optimal transport. So yeah. there's this generalization where you, uh, where you allow for mass to be, so you allow to uh, remove a bit of mass or create mm -hmm. a bit of mass in the way. Yeah. So you, you penalize, of course. So it, it's something like instead of, uh, I said before, so, um, let's see how how do I say it? So the the problem bef before, so you have to have this this constraint enforced. That means that you are transport transforming up. In unbalanced optimal transport, you uh, add a, a term to the cost. So you say minimize this thing plus some lambda times the KL between the actual marginal of pi uh, and mu i for example so this means that you cannot so if you make this very very large that means that these two things cannot be uh, very different mm -hmm. okay. and if you make okay. it a bit a bit smaller then you allow them for for a bit of, of change so in this case for example yeah exactly we, we would we would put some some penalization of, on the mass creation or destruction but still um so it is encouraged to move if it's not too far away, for example. Mm -hmm. so mass is, is encouraged to move, but if, if if the points where it has to map are just too far away, it says, I don't care. I yeah, makes uh, sense. drop this mass. Yeah. And and that's what, what is used in, 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 in biological images, I think. So you yeah. you you assume that, that that because of noise and because of, I mean, you, you may get some some photon more in one picture than in the other. So mm -hmm. you assume that some mass uh, will be unmatched, so will not be matched, and you you you, you just use this this unbalanced version of it. And we are trying to to, to implement this into into the library, but as I say, it's a bit it's a bit uh, there are some technical difficulties. Yeah, no, I can understand. I mean, um, first of all, it's a very complex problem, right? And um, also parallelizing this is super difficult, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have a, a very short uh, last question. What about the dimensionality? So, um, where you were referring more to 2D or also 3D or MD data? So, does the dimensionality matter? Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, you, you got me. <laughs> so, there, there are problems in, in, uh, in optimal transport with respect to, to dimension. So, let's see. First thing is that all, all that I talk about, I think that is um, is completely agnostic to the dimension. So in principle, you can run this on arbitrary dimension. I mean, it's not not all the steps are implemented. I am using it for two D right now, but we want to have it also for three D. And in principle, it's, it's agnostic to the dimension. But of course, um, it gets more challenging in terms of space if you because we are not doing some clever stuff on, on the grids where we are uh, um, supporting our measures or anything. So that's a bit challenging. In principle, it can be used. Um, but then there's also uh, some, uh, this is a bit hard. So the, the rate of convergence, so imagine that, that you have uh, a sample at, at the end of the day, you, you may have samples of images, right? And if, if you have your mu n is a sample with, with n points, 
if the dimension if the dimension where this measure lives is very large, it will take very long for this to convert to, 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 to the actual measure where you are sampling from in the vast time distance. So that's a bit of um, yeah. maybe this is a technicality. So you you can you, you can forget what, what I just said. Okay, I, I will I will delete this. This this wasn't here anytime. Um, so long story short, you can use it in a, in, in in high dimensional data if if it's supported in unstructured clouds of points. I think it doesn't matter so much. In particular, these libraries I think that are good handling these problems. It's, and and these libraries I think that they also implement the unbalanced version of the optimal transport. So you can yeah you can use it even if if you don't have um, if you need to delete a bit of mass or yeah, to be a bit more flexible on, on the mass constraint. Okay, thank you very much. And also thank you very much for the talk. It was really impressive. <laughs> thank you too. Is there anything now, Art? Yeah, uh, thanks very much. I actually uh, had questions along the same line that that's so I'm quite happy uh, uh, Justina started uh, this, this uh, interrogation a little bit. Um, so in the case of fluorescence imaging uh, in, in of biological cells, I could imagine that the sort of, uh, as you alluded to already, you would have this issues with a constant mass and mass creation and annihilation, right? So they would come from the boundary conditions. Obviously, you don't see the whole cell most likely. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you you have your images, I imagine, in some sort of a series of a, or a small time lapse uh, in, a, in a temporal dimension as well changing. And there will be an additional uh, sort of uh, source of, of mass annihilation uh, and creation, not creation, annihilation mostly from bleaching and fluorescence lifetime altogether. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you are considering incorporating these models into the constraining somehow the, the mass annihilation in this case in order to make the sort of relax this problem a little bit and make it easier to address. Uh, and an additional point, have you looked into or do you know of any applications of uh, optimal transport in combination with contrastive learning? With con contrastive learning? Contrastive learning, yes. Coming yeah, back to the Huskies in the in the beginning of your talk, I actually don't know what contrastive learning is. I'm very sorry. So um, contrastive learning uh, is is an additional sort of approach to to try to put together similar and similar and different and different further apart, while while create while while having a objective function. Uh, being being sort of optimized on a certain stuff it's usually it, it, it can be achieved through uh triplet loss for example does that mm. no i'm sorry okay see so, okay that's that's fine i think you, you will be able to answer that better than, <laughs> than i after after a quick google search um, and right. regarding regarding the first question um so that, that seemed very interesting, also very problem specific. So this is about the bleaching, about the fluorescent light, because it involves, so if you are getting some, some biological data that is obtained via this technique, um, you may want to take this into consideration in this, in this term. So um, this unbalanced transport is a, a pretty general framework. You don't need to use the KL divergence here. You can use other penalizations on the mass creation so that I mean, if, if, if you don't put any penalization of the, on the mass creation, you will just teleport the mass. So you would just say, okay, I, I teleport this mass here because it's, it's uh, cheaper than paying the cost of, of transport. But here in, in this penalization, you can, you can adjust it to, to your model. And to, so I think that that can be included. Maybe it needs a bit of intuition about what the, how the image acquisition was, but I, I feel it, it is perfectly possible to, to introduce it there. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you too. Maybe, maybe as a physics thing for <laughs> optimal transport, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess nobody else has a question. No. Well. 
Ben, Ismail, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for coming to the talk. <laughs>